Here we go. So, liebe Freunde, ähm, ich bin total froh. Wir sind jetzt hier bei Borderlands 2K am Stand. Und äh, dank Hannes wunderbarer Zusammenarbeit haben wir die Möglichkeit, jetzt mit Scott Kester zu reden. Um, Scott, you can say hello to the guys. <laughs> hey, everybody's seeing you. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> And uh, we are very happy uh, that we can actually interview the art director of the new Borderlands 3. Yeah. Um, according to the things that have changed and, and there comes already the first question. What is different? Where's Pandora? What happened to the people? Uh, <laughs> you know, Pandora's been through some rough stuff, but you know, we're, we're at a point now where I've been on the franchise since the first game and the second game and now moving into this. So I was a concept artist on one and two uh, and moved into art director on this one. So I've done my share of time in the Borderlands, right? on Pandora. So I think for us, uh, if you remember at the end of Borderlands 2, if you haven't beat it, spoilers, sorry, you know, it, it, it alludes to more vaults that are out in the universe. So it only made sense for us to, we love Pandora. You spend time on Pandora, rest assured, but it was important to us to get to new planets, you know, to go experience a, a, great, a bigger universe and get to multiple planets and just kind of, I don't know, just like expand the scope a little bit more than mm -hmm. just the sort of backwoods of, uh, Hey, you know, Pandora, if you will. This so. one you started with a pre prequel, huh? Was that it? was like the... Yeah, we kind of, we got to the moon, you know, and uh, so, we, so we're like, okay, that was cool, but like, we need to go, we need to like, go, go. So that was, it was key for us on this, yeah. So what was for you the biggest challenge in, in the new franchise now? Um, to, to what, what kind of new layer you put for yourself? Like, like the meta physics, you know, like, yeah. the, I don't know. How yeah, to I mean, we switched engines from Unreal 3 to Unreal 4. It gave us a lot, you know, it gave us a lot more technical abilities to do, to polish it visually and stuff. But, you know, those things are kind of a given. It's going to look a little better. It's going to, the light is going to be a bit better. But I think for us, it was more pushing ourselves to build content and assets that were a lot more diverse than we had in the past because the deserts of Pandora are deserts of Pandora, right? And there's some variety inside of there as we saw in Borderlands 2, but I wanted to make big cities. I wanted to make bigger, like lush jungle swamps. Uh, I wanted to build things I can't talk about that you'll get to see when the game comes out. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to, uh, you know, take you to more locations. We wanted to just, uh, I think we, uh, <clears throat> it's not that we were bored of Pandora, it's just that we knew it wouldn't make sense to do some of the things we wanted. And we said like, let's just go further. And it gave us an opportunity to make new enemies, uh -huh. make new NPCs, uh, new experiences. The story takes us in a pretty weird roller coaster, if you will, throughout this game. So it was fun to, you know, planet hop and such, yeah. Because when I remember Borderlands 2, I remember actually being brought back to Australia, to Cooper Paddy, where, where I was, uh, and it, it gave me this, it was a very strange feeling of, being lonesome but in the same way there's always somebody watching you you know you have yeah. this immense this large scale of, of, of desert yeah, yeah. and yeah. suddenly now the deserts are still there I, I yeah. think yeah, yeah there yeah, will yeah, be deserts yeah, for sure yeah with caves and everything yeah but now with the jungle and and, and what, what, what and it felt a bit like I don't know how to compare it but uh, it felt like it gets more juicy it, yeah it's, it's more <laughs> liquid in a way yeah. it's more i don't yeah. know it's a uh, um these are things that like it, yeah it, it's just a lot more effort there's a, like so art sets which might not make sense because people could just could take that a little different we went from making about six to about 16 in this game as forms of different ways that we can make the environments from you know the architecture from the biome from the rocks to the materials to the sky to the sky box uh, we have a day night cycle right so in places like promethea where it's like in space and you see the asteroid belt and like these kind of you know the the asteroids blot out the the, the, the light source which mm -hmm. casts the darkness and it's dynamic and it kind of moves so it like gave us an opportunity to dive deeper into the the like kind of just It kind of like it's thicker you know there's more of a there's more worlds there's more depth in the world building there's tiny little details all over the place and yeah. people really take the time we, we we hand ink everything right so it's all done by artists and all these little goofy things that are written and if you really take the time to explore do the side missions and things you see just like a wealth of that was one of the things that was kind of scary because pandora is maybe a little simple but we felt like we had like done a really good job of like from the signage to the people that live there to all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, we felt like it felt like a place, but it was like, okay, now we got to do that here. Now we got to do that here. So the signage is very unique between 
that plan from Promethea to, you know, Promethea is like signs and it's like higher graphic design and kind of an electric city. And yeah. you've got, you've got the swamp of Eden six, for instance. And I was like, my mandate was like hand painted signs. It had to look like one guy had painted. So there was no, you, you know, so it felt like kind of this, like, uh, it was warm and kind of like a small town and stuff. And I think of people and there's like rotary, like, clubs that sponsor like adopt a highway road you know it's like those little yeah. things that yeah. like i just i obsess over <laughs> you know if Wonderful. people don't see them they don't see them but if they feel it and they understand there's something there there's a thickness there's a, a there's a believability that's what's important it's to huge us. it's huge yeah. it's so many impact so how, how do you go story wise i mean to expand a, a story over planets yeah. yeah like a galaxy so, yeah so with our team uh, with our narrative team and just with the story and you know all of us working together it was we wanted to we wanted to leave pandora and uh we needed it to so the calypso twins who are our villains in this game they have uh uh you, you know they're a little more world i don't know worldly is the right way but like they they've been, they've been and seen some stuff they've been around and like they're the essential thing that they're doing is they know where all the vaults the, these vaults are and they're like oh we're gonna go to them and we're gonna take all the power and stuff and you're like Wait, no, we have to do that. So you're chasing them, trying to kind of beat them to those vaults because they're going to use it for, you know, uh -huh. the, not the best of yeah, 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 things, so. we'll say that. Uh -huh. and I don't want to spoil anything, but it's not good, you know. Uh -huh. So uh, they're they're trying to do those things, and you're trying to stop them and get to them before them. So it's kind of like a cool race. So it was really awesome to, like, you know, hey, oh, they're going to Promethea. we got to go, too. You know, oh, we got to get a spaceship. Okay, we got a spaceship. Like, let's go. And uh, it just was, it, it felt like the next step for us. And it felt like uh, the story took us to places that we had never done. And sometimes I joke, the writer might write this thing, which not to say it's not a talent to write. It absolutely is. My gosh. But it's like, and they go to the planet, you know. And it's like, we'll go to Promethea now. And uh -huh. you're like, okay. So that's. The amount of art we made in Borderlands 2 entirely, again, for one planet. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it's like, and then we go to Eden 6. The entirety of all the art, it, you know, it's, it's, it's so much. And, uh, but it was, it, it was a lot of fun. How and many it, people involved in this? Oh, gosh. Uh, How big is the team? Hundreds. Uh, so we have two studios. We have a Quebec studio, which is a, that, that, that helps tremendously. They're, they're about 100 to 120, and we're around 300. So like, and you know, so it's a pretty big team. I, I've gone from being uh, working on Borderlands One, which was a, I wouldn't say it was a small game, but it was kind of experimental. It was, it, you know, we were like, are people gonna like this? We don't know. And we've just got a little bigger, got a little bigger. I've been at Gearbox for 12, 12 years in November, oh, wow. and I've sort of spent most of my time on Borderlands, and oh. it's been weird to. You know, the, the team grows, yeah. people go, people leave, and, uh, you know, it's a lot of people, so it's a lot to coordinate, <laughs> we'll say that. Yeah. It's a great piece of art. Hannes, uh, do Hannes the yeah. yeah. What have been the most controversial points during development for this game? Oh, just like hardest things to do? To well, fill? also discussions and disputes. Yeah, so it's easy to go, all right, we're going wild. Let's go real wild. Like, you know, we experimented with, uh, people have misconstrued this. I, I tried some things with art style that got maybe more aggressive than they should. We had some, there was a GDC demo that we did, and it had, like, hatch-based shadows, and it was, like, really cool because the light, it cast, like, hand-drawn shadows on everything, but it looked a little too, you know, it was, like, a little too aggressive, you know, so that was something... Uh, we've there was some desires to go even further and do some of those things and it was just like it's it's you know discussion is great you know and uh, having to challenge one another at work is really cool but sometimes I mean like the gun system like we rebuilt it from the ground up like entirely like we used to share all the gun pieces between all the manufacturers to to make but if it was a body of a torg it was a torg gun even if it had doll parts and stuff now we siloed all those and honestly to say we're going to completely rebuild the gun system. There's hundreds of pieces for every single gun, not giving all of the, like, uh, colors and rarities and, you know, modal switches and stuff to do that. I mean, it was, you know, I'm not going to say everybody just said, yeah, let's do it. You know, let's spend three and a half years of doing, you know, my our weapons lead, Jim Barnett, uh, from a... From a 
from a content perspective to uh, to Jet, uh, lead gun designer Grant. Like, there's a group of guys that just sat around and they thought about these guns and they thought about the systems to build them. And it was, you know, it was we knew we had to do it because we're the gun game. So it was a lot of work. The Vault Hunter, uh, Moe's was a big, was a total pain in the ass. Um, that character, like, to build a mech that you could ride and you could do all this stuff. I mean, it was the longest. That was the first character we started to make. And uh, there was a lot of, the mech's so big. Oh, no, we had to make doors bigger, you know, because of that. And it was, there was a lot of back and forth there. So, like, people, I think, it was, it was, there was a lot that went into the characters. Each character has more depth than every single character from the last game put together. That's just like one character. And it was like, those are things like, oh, we're not comfortable with that. This is what we did in the past. So like, uh, but we feel like we pushed the right things forward um, and kept the right things in place, but try to make them better. So, you know, story, you could say, oh, this is, maybe we shouldn't do this. So there's always debate, but that's good. Like when you debate and when there's like, a little bit of tension, I think it brings out the best in us, and we have to be creative in the boundaries that we have. And I think that's really what the best thing is, is like, you can think of anything, like anybody can, but like, can you execute it? Then can you get a group of people to like, rally around it and do it, right? And uh, those are completely different aspects that come around, but it's it's awesome. I mean, it's a collaborative process is really wild, and there's a lot of difficulties. I mean. I'm not gonna lie, this was the hardest game I've ever done. Like, without a doubt, uh, it, it really was. I, I think every, if you ask anybody in the studio, they would say the same thing, so there's several of them here, and I think they would, you know, <laughs> they, they would say that, so. We switched creative directors, I moved into the art director role, but, uh, you know, it was, there was a lot to go into, but it was, it was no easy task, for sure. That said, we're very proud of the, the, the effort that came out on the yeah. end, so. Because the way you work, it's like, how do you surprise people in this in, in, in this gaming world? I mean, it's now 20 yeah. years later, you know, yeah. 20 years before, you yeah. know, everything you could do with a game that was yeah. like fascinating, but now the, it always raised, yeah. you know, the point of or where, the, where, the, or the, where the limbo is happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, now uh, you and again made a surprise. I mean, it's, it's, it's surprising to, totally. Yeah. I, I see it and I just say, okay, I want to play that. Yeah. I, I just saw uh, Angry Joe and, and Boogie are playing that oh, with yeah. a mech. And I just thought, how about the balancing with the mech? You know, oh, dude. it's tough, huh? Yeah, yeah, balance is really tricky. Uh, characters, I mean, here's the thing: we've done focus testing, we've done this, uh, we've done RQA, we played the game, but really, the you guys, the the world is the ultimate. Like, how broken is this? How unbalanced is this? Because there are so many options in the builds and the way you can build the characters and the way the class mod, I mean, because we talk about the guns, but the shields, the class mods, the grenades, the artifacts, I mean, they do wild crap. And the way that they connect with your action skills, which you, everyone's got multiple action skills, with, you know, you've got your passives, but you've also got augmentation slots into all those things. And it's like, dude, I don't know. We, we can't see all the guns, you know? Like, we, we know a lot of them, and we know the algorithms and the things we built, because they, they are procedurally generated, but we do, we custom hand make a lot of them, too, and we say, okay, there's this, but we never really know how balanced it is, and, and uh, it's, it, so balance is a tricky thing, because you got some characters that, I like, under the hood, I'm like, man, that is, that's got to bust the hell out of it. But at the same time, we're not PV, we're not PvP, and since we're PvE, we're like, eh, you know, we'll let people have fun. But, you know, we do live in a world of, like, micro patches and things like that now, which is something that's heinously, like, you know, over mm -hmm. overboard. Like, we'll, we'll come in. But at the same time, we don't want to totally remove people's fun. So, you know. When Borderlands is going to win an art prize, or did it happen already? What's that? When Borderlands is going to get an art prize, I an mean, art? Like, an art art prize, oh, no, like like a I, gallery that is, yeah, I don't know, yeah, just, I, here's an art piece, yeah, take it, or I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like we, uh, yeah, I, well, I love the art style. It's something that I, I in Borderlands One, when I started on the project, there was no. I actually started doing the interface part of all things. The idea with the cell shading. Uh, well, I came up, as we started messing with the look of the game, that yeah. was when I jumped into making art on it. And I did the character designs for the first game and the second game and, uh, and, and some environment stuff too. And then this, so I was part of the, I wasn't the only one. There yeah, was a lot of, the, there was like a handful of people that yeah. were trying this new look and it was really exciting. And 
at the time, I mean, I was making the interface art, and at home, I would go home at night, and I would draw these characters, and I would bring them in, and they were like, yeah, you get to do this now, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> so, so, uh, and it was cool, but, like, the art has been really important to us, uh, uh, obviously, it is to me, the character designs are very important, the worlds, the guns, the creatures, all those things, we put a lot into that, and it's just so nice to hear people, like, appreciate it, because, uh, there's a lot of games that look, I don't know about, you know, not similar to us, but there's a lot of games that kind of have a general consistent vibe. There's no the comparison industry. to Borderlands with yeah. no, no game, really. <laughs> so. Even the, the things that, that t published by 2K, other stuff, there's no Borderlands in, in, in ever. <laughs> it's not happening because it's, it's so, it's such a closed box, yeah. you know? It, yeah. It's a pain though, because a lot of people think like, oh, you're just putting a shader on it. <laughs> and. We do have a procedural outline. The outline that goes around things, that is something that's actually procedurally driven. But every other line and every other thing is hand drawn by a person. Yeah. It takes us about twice as long to make any piece of content in the game than it would if we were making a photo real game. Yeah. Uh, so we actually paint ourselves to make yeah. it look like that. And you feel that? Yeah. yeah. That. So it is. And uh, we, we joke, I spend a lot of time to make things look crappy. You know, and I don't mean like that the art is bad, but like, you know, the, the wear and the tear and stuff, like we kind of have a rule, like everything is a little part of my French shitty in the Borderlands. Like even if you go to a nicer planet, it's still kind of grungy and gross, yeah. but it's just kind of like, a, you know, the aesthetic to the things. You it's know, a, a little total, bit of tape, a little bit of, you know. It's a total contradiction because the cell shading actually cleans up things yeah. and um, just minimize uh, 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 things that have a texture like that one to uh, blue you know yeah, you have a here yeah. you have a, uh, a surface with a certain yeah. structure but in cell shading and now put back the life you know yeah, bring yeah. back the life yeah it, I, I like outlines I like you know I, I like to contain the elements I like clarity and I like to be able to I think this game uh, in my opinion three is it's really crisp it feels really nice it's kind of easy we spend a lot of time on just the psychology of where your eye focuses on things and being able to separate enemies from backgrounds and colors and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's it's super. Uh, we're, we're really proud of it. I hope people enjoy it. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Hast du noch eine Frage? Because one question I have: when when you travel, I don't know if you can say that, but when you travel with a spaceship, uh -huh. there will be loading screens in between, or there, there is loading screens. There's loading yeah. screens, and you don't. And this is something that we have tried to clarify. You. You go to the the bridge and you put in coordinates and you kind of watch. You know, you go through space and you appear, arrive at the planets, but you do not actually pilot the ship. Okay, it's just something that like people are like this. It's it's more about coordinates, but there is some cool presentation in regards to going through space and yeah. hyperspeed and planets coming and going and stuff. It's pretty neat. But so. it's not a space shooter. You won't play no, in space no, no, anything. No. You just it's, travel. It's, you it's really that. your hub that's taking you cool. to all these places. Yeah, so it's yeah. kind of your home base, yeah. and uh, it just felt you know it felt right. So yeah. we kind of try to tell people that like it's not necessarily like oh I'm flying and picking everywhere. I'm I very happy go. to hear that. Yeah, because the, the main focus it, is is down it, to earth. It, you know? Yeah, it is. It's really about boots on the ground, like getting down there and like you know you taking care of business. You cool. know, and so yeah. Is there any uh, Borderlands park uh, in the making that we can <laughs> like a theme park? Yeah. Oh damn! But I don't. Not to my knowledge. You I would know? love it. Oh dude, I, uh, that would be cool. You know, I see the people. You know, people cosplay and kind of dress up, and you're just like, oh my gosh. There's yeah. a guy. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the Zane that's here. Oh my gosh! I was like. If I would go to a place that everything was like inked and looked like that, I would be in heaven, you know. Because like, it's funny because people go, "Oh, why you want to make it look like that?" It's because like I'm, this world's boring. Yeah, it's not boring. Let me take that it back. It's no, like, no, it's not boring. It's, it's like we can. You For know, you, it's, it's the home. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. It's, home, it's yeah. an home. So you know I, yeah. I want to go somewhere else. Yeah. I want to make the field different. So if there was ever a park, that would be hysterical. I don't think it were quite at that level, but <laughs> what, yeah. I, what I love about this art, uh, this art is that people try to, and this, this is for them now. Then they see how hard it is to adapt to this uh, artistic <laughs> style. Yeah, when yeah. you suddenly have to cosplay yourself. Yeah, yeah in this style, it's yeah. it's. Uh, how do you do self shading? I mean, how do you minimize textures on your yeah. on your body yeah. and make it yeah. look like Borderlands? Yeah, yeah. it's, it's very tough. Dude, thing. some of those guys, some of them, man, I hats off to them. I, I apologize to them when I see them. I'm like, I'm so sorry that you had to put that much effort into that, but man, you look awesome, <laughs> you know. But they love it. How know? does it feel to you when you see somebody? Oh, that dude, it's so wild. I never have gotten used to it, to be honest. Like I said, when this Zane came through and he's got all the LED strips, everything's like lit up, and I'm just like. Holy crap, like I just, I gotta take pictures with them, shake their hand, I'm like, I apologize to them. We're <laughs> shocked, shocked in love. I, I am, yeah. It's, cool. it's nice. the, the outpouring of our community and 
Uh, you know, like for instance, the Troy and Tyrene, the Calypsos. Like the game's not out. I don't. People can't completely know if they love them or not. And I'm like, so much fan art. So many people dressing up like them. I'm yeah. like, I hope you like them. <laughs> you know? Definitely. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. And it's like those guys. I saw a guy with a full sleeve of flak on his arm, and I'm like. You have not probably played that. Because <laughs> very few people have actually got a chance to play Flag. I'm like, yeah. I hope you like Flag yeah, because yeah. you made a lifelong commitment <laughs> to this wow. hobo robot. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much. Anything, anything we, we, we need to add to this wonderful interview with you? Oh man, anything I, I that don't you know? I mean, what is there? What kind of question you would always somebody to ask you? Is there any question that you would like to answer that you have? Oh man. Uh, Let me think. Uh, I mean, gosh, this is a. Uh, I don't know. You got something? You yeah, know, like, maybe the, the direction of the of the art style. I mean, yeah. there is like reference in, in yours. I mean, what, what kind of artist did so, you favor in so your youth? To me, like I, my fuel basically has been like kind of graffiti and anime and. Uh, Uh, certain artists along the way, right, that have really fed into it. I've never really looked at uh, other video game art so much, and that's been the inspiration for this. It's always been like graphic, no like comic books and manga and uh, graffiti and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's always been some, sort of an amalgamation of those things. So to me, it's, uh, e you know, we always kind of want to look a little bit different but and like we kind of wear some of our inspirations on our sleeve, but at the same time, people might not understand that you know that came from this that got us to there and those kind of things so it's like you know some of them are kind of obvious like I love Akira it's my favorite movie of all time it's my favorite comic book which of one? All time. Akira Akira right uh, and so when I'm making Promethea I'm like dude I want that thing to look like Neo Tokyo you know and like we got this oh damn and we start cool. and we start having the lights going cool. back and forth it's like it's this complete homage like I absolutely adore so some of those things are made a little more obvious but right. there is a lot of like younger generation that has probably never experienced the yeah, movie, for yeah. instance. Like, there was somebody that, uh, it was a while ago, like, and they were kind of like, you know, I don't know, it's it's funny because sometimes they're like, oh yeah, that game's kind of like, you know, I, I, I don't know, because there's generational gaps, because like a lot of the core and the tone of what we reference is actually like 80s movies, you know, and yeah. Paul, we, we kind of have a thing that we call, it, it's Verhoeven, and people are like, what does that mean? Like, And I'm like, Paul Verhoeven, and like, who's that? I'm like, oh no, you know, it's like, you know, the director of like Robocop, you, you know, and yeah. like all these kind of like... Your president knows. Yeah, 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 yeah. he must know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, we kind of look at a lot of Starship Troopers that like yeah, sort of it, like love it, love it. Uh, that stuff and honestly like you know to me it's like guys like John Carpenter and stuff that yeah. kind of make these like they know what they're doing you know it's kind of like they know it like so to me whenever I think about the franchise it's like it's B movie material but it's done with like a triple A mindset Absolutely. and I think that that is because uh, I think a lot of things that keep all we're gonna be super serious, we're gonna be this piece, we're gonna be this, they, they almost don't have fun with it. And you almost play the game, you're like, man, this is a really good game, but it's just kind of missing, you know, something a little bit. So I think we just let ourselves be ourselves. We let the inspirations of, if, if it was art or movies or those things kind of like come in and, and kind of, we let ourselves get in there more than we might maybe should yeah. you know and it's a very collaborative environment like people have an idea for this it's like okay go talk to the guy and, yeah. uh, um, and, I, and I do that as an art director on this like I try to kind of go here's the direction we're going to point but if somebody does something that's so super awesome and I'm like well damn that's better than what I was thinking like let's, let's roll with that but let me kind of mm -hmm. you know keep it focused towards something and It's, it's just awesome you know and I think the fans feel that when they play the game I think they can tell like we're just kind of goofing around, yeah. you know? Because, like, I, I, I guess at the end of the day, it's like, what we make, we want to play. Like, we're not, like, going, oh, we want to make this game so we can win an Oscar or something, you yeah, know, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, we want to make this game because we want to have fun playing it. And that the beauty of that is it's really kind of translated to, like, we're the fans, too. Like, we're fans of it, and we're building content that we feel like we just as... You know, because people are like, oh, man, you make this, it's whatever. I'm like, dude, we're just like everyone else. It's just like we just, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So I, I think that that's been, I don't know. You changed, you, changed the, you changed the world for gaming so much, and I think you're <laughs> the only one, simply because you stayed to this. We do the cell shading, we start from zero, and we don't, because I saw, so many, I saw the first trailer, the very first trailer of Borderlands 1, and I was like, 
yeah, I would like to play that game, but um, I'm not sure if... And then suddenly this cell shading came yeah. from nowhere, and I just <laughs> it, I have to play this so, game. Yeah. There was no question. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Because like when we did that, so Pitchford didn't even know we were doing that. It was like a total side uh -huh. hustle. Side project. Was, like these guys like, oh, check out this. And, and so they showed me when they started doing it. I was like, oh, crap, I can help with that. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah. And it was such a cool, you know, and we showed it to him. And he was like, what the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> and then he looked at it and he was like, this is really good. I can see it. 